I'm doing week 63. I don't understand how people can say that LGB issues and trans and gender issues, trans issues, are so separate. Gender is a huge, huge part of LGB issues. People use, people have gaydars. I don't have a gaydar, but other people do. And that, as far as I can tell, is primarily based on the idea that gay men are a bit effeminate and lesbians are a bit masculine. And as far as I can tell, that's primarily how gaydars function. I don't know, but there's so much more that's similar besides just that I think gender is a huge part of Gender is a huge part of LGB issues. Um, aside from that, right now, um, LGB issues are primarily surrounding gay marriage. Like, that's the big thing um, right now. Um, that's, that's our problem too, guys. That is our problem too. For those of us who like people of the same physical sex, who would like to get married someday, that's our problem too, especially if you don't want surgery or you can't have surgery and stuff like that. Um, that's, it's just, that's our problem too. And then there's the right to work. People, there's still places where you cannot work if you're gay or bisexual and you get found out, such as the military, such as everyday other things too. There's places that just, they don't have anything in there that says, um, sexual orientation is not discriminate, is not discriminated against. And same with gender identity. There's even fewer places who say, um, we won't discriminate against you for your gender identity. Um, and same with renting an apartment. People can just refuse to rent you an apartment or kick you out because you're gay or you're trans or anything. Um, not anything, but hopefully you understand my point. And there's so much more than that too, but these were the two things I could think of off the top of my head. And it's been way too long since I've done this video and I didn't want to wait another several days. Being free of discrimination is the huge, huge, huge point of both of the LGB and the T issues. Um, not to mention the A, I, Q, S, P, whatever else you feel like adding in there. Gender is just, I, I already said it once, but gender is just a huge part of LGB issues. Or at least gender presentation, not necessarily gender identity, because there are there's just, there's way too many um, LGB people who identify perfectly with the gender that they are. They don't have any trouble with that. But gender presentation is often different. For example, drag queens, um, drag kings, um, people who just andre dress androgynously, people who, um, lesbians who shave their hair off, um, gay guys who um, wear effeminate clothing and Kids are beaten up for being sissies if they're little boys or being too masculine if they're little girls. They're just beaten up and bullied and bleh. But adults too. It does not stop at little kids. Adults get beaten up and killed for being perceived as acting in the wrong gender. And it's not necessarily because they're perceived as gay. It's because they're perceived as threatening to these other genders and maybe it's because partly if you find out they're gay then sometimes that's an issue too but a lot of the times it's just like oh you're weird I can't tolerate any weirdness you must fit in within my gender definitions within my categories and if you don't you are frightening and I'm going to hurt you and people don't necessarily care if you're gay or straight if you don't fit in their gender categories, definitions, whatever, then you are a threat and you will be hurt. So just stereotypically, people who are like that, men and women, men who are a little too feminine, women who are a little too masculine, um, gay men, gay women, bisexual people. Ugh, I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit wound up right now. They're, these people are just discriminated against for whatever. Um, I know I was reading this book, it's called Gender Queer, um, Voices from Beyond the Sexual Binary, and it's got this great epilogue by a person named Richie Wilchins, um, at least that's how I think you pronounce here last name. Um, and I'm gonna read a few quotes. Um, Ricky was giving a speech to a group of LG 
people and trying to explain why bisexual and trans people should also be included in their, in their fight. First, Z says, I'm not going to plead for their acceptance or tolerance. Their acceptance or tolerance being lesbians and gays. Um, instead, I was going to recruit them to take a step with me out of the old paradigm that have created these boundaries between us. Um, it's not to surmount our separateness, but rather to explore the strengths of our already being together. People who you just know are homosexuals, that's all about gender, or gender presentation anyway. Okay, because the gays and lesbians picked out for harassment or assault are almost always targeted because of their gender, because they aren't just like everyone else, because they are visibly queer. And so it's not so much a question of transgender as of recognizing that gender has always been a part of the gay agenda and always will be. It's about the right to be who and what they are, whole and complete without omission, and that goes for gays and lesbians and bisexuals and trans people and androgynous and asexual and in intersexual and queers in general, everybody. When it comes to inclusion, we are less interested in tearing down the house than in building a small yet tastefully furnished addition out back. The current paradigm of gender. There is male and there is female and there's a spectrum and the LGB is in this house and the T is the tasteful tastefully furnished addition out back and it should be we tear down the house we get rid of the house because it's just it doesn't fit everybody and we build something new that everybody can work it within the mainspring of homophobia is gender the notion that gay men are insufficiently masculine or lesbian women somehow necessarily inadequately feminine because gender is too basic to be confined to any one group and too fundamental to leave anyone behind um, that goes with, again, the issues that people, no matter what, how they identify as a gender, whether it matches their sex or not, are discriminated against because of gender presentation, because they are perceived as being wrong somehow. And even the people who are perceived as being right, they are pushed into being who they think they should be. Um, yeah, that's my next quote. It's also about this 17-year-old Midwestern cheerleader who ruins her health and who ruins her health with anorexia because real women are supposed to be unnaturally thin. It's about the 46-year-old Joe Sixpack who hits a crowded school bus on his way home from the bar because real men are supposed to be heavy drinkers. And those are true. Apparently those actually happened. Those were actual newspaper articles. Okay, and it's about the shy, artistic, and entirely straight little boy who is taunted and assaulted in school each day because within that environment, environment he is perceived as genderqueer, gender different, or simply gender vulnerable. Or, as far as I'm concerned, it's because he's being perceived as gay, too. It's not just about gender, it's about being perceived as gay. It's about both of them, though, not just one. And they're just so intertwined, I don't really understand how people can say they're separate. I just don't. Um, and furthermore, there's one last thing. There's this poem called First They Came For by Rev Reverend Martin Niemöller. Um, a lot of you have heard it. A lot of you have read it. A lot of you have at least heard of it in some version or another. First they came for the Jews, and I didn't stand up because I wasn't Jewish. Then they came for the gays, and I didn't stand up because I wasn't gay. Then they came for the Muslims, and I didn't stand up because I wasn't Muslim. Then they came for me, and by that time, there was no one left to stand up for me. If we don't stand up for each other, they're going to get us. They. I don't know who. I don't care who. They are going to get us. Um, and it's just... We need to everybody stand up for each other. There have been... I hope I'm not running out of time. There have been... I, I, I've heard that people said that women's rights and black rights, when women were getting their rights, they should have included black people and said, no, these people need to come along too. And when black people were getting their rights back finally, um, people, a lot of people agreed that no, they needed to pull along the gay issues with them. And now there's gay issues and they need to pull us trans issues along with them too. Um, and it's just, if you leave people behind, you are just further separating and separating humanity 
distinguishing little boxes, chopping into little box bite-sized pieces so that were easier to digest that way. Um, and it's just wrong. It's just so wrong. Everything is just like this big bleh, mush. And it's not separate at all. People try to make separate separateness, distinguish categories when really none exist. 